Hey guys, welcome to another TCT on the road segment. We're here in Atlanta again, home to our station WIGL channel 38. And as we're connecting with the community, finding out some great places, we came across MODA. That's the Museum of Design Atlanta. And this is a great place. As a father of four kids, this is a family friendly, fun place. And right now we're walking through the Hall of Noodles. So let's go check it out. We're here inside the Museum of Design and I'm here with Janelle Miniter. She's gonna show us around. We're here in front of something really cool, the 3D printers. So uh, tell us a little bit about the museum. Okay, so we're the Museum of Design Atlanta. We're the only museum in the Southeast exclusively dedicated to design and we're very much a contemporary forward-facing institution. So we change exhibits about three or four times a year and each one focuses on a different design discipline. These 3D printers are actually on permanent loan to us or indefinite loan, and these are from our previous exhibition from about two years ago, which was all looking at the various 3D printing methods and how Evolved has become and looking at how they're being used and created in all sorts of different fields. And actually, if you notice the mural over here, this is actually from our exhibition right before this one called Text Me How We Live in Language, which was a large contemporary graphic design show. The place looks really cool right here in the middle of Midtown, and so I'm excited to take a look around. Awesome. I'm super excited to have you all, and I'll start showing you our current exhibition called Designing Playful Cities that I curated as my first curation. So I'm very excited to show you all around. Awesome. Thank you. So to start off the exhibition, we have this installation called Delirious Fruits. It was created by a design firm in Canada called The Astronauts. And so over here we have images of the original installation in Quebec. It's looking at ways of transforming alleyways and making it more appealing as well as promoting more healthier choices like really walking instead of always driving to our various points of destinations. And Again, at MODA, we're always really interested in showing the design process and talking about the challenges and why designers are doing what they're doing instead of just focusing on the end product. So with this piece, it was done for a competition called Le Passage in Sully, or Unusual Pathways. And again, it was to activate alleyways, so trying to solve the challenge of alleyways being really dark and uninviting. So with this installation, it's making it warm, inviting, and encouraging healthier activity. And why it's been recreated in our hall gallery is actually because, conveniently for us, the hall gallery almost completely mimics this alleyway in size and dimensions. We had to make a few edits, but it's almost perfectly like this. And also the reason why we have such a large installation here is because at MODA we're always very interested in making our exhibitions and the whole museum as interactive as possible for people to really engage and immerse themselves while also in being invited to participate in the design process themselves and kind of rethink things or create their own ideas. And so with this piece, it's the beginning of our exhibition. So as a way of being a threshold, as people walk into the space, they can immediately transform their mindsets from the busy city and start thinking about more creative, enjoyable, playful ways of exploring the area. So. This is our side gallery and has a very different color story than the hall. It's supposed to mimic a sunny day in the park. So over here we have for the first time AstroTurf and we really chose that as a way to solve making this a more soft and inviting space specifically for building purposes. So you can see two examples from yesterday that our patrons recreated and also can see all the wonderful interesting shapes on this wall over here. This was a project called the Kit of Imagination. It was designed by Urban Conga. They're a design firm based in Tampa, Florida. And so the first challenge with this piece is that there's no square or rectangular pieces. So people have to really become imaginative and innovative, trying to figure out how they're going to make the piece stand and have a strong foundation. For 
our walls on this side, we usually don't have a ton of digital media, but I made this choice because I really wanted to give people an opportunity of seeing play and the installations in their original setting and see how the citizens were interacting and playing with it. So it's showing off many projects worldwide. The first one we saw was Canada, and this one is actually first installed in Oxford, England. It's called Shadowing. This project is actually custom lampposts that have the ability of recording and projecting shadows. They were very much inspired by Peter Pan and his mischievous shadows. And so when people in Oxford are walking underneath the lampposts, they'll notice the shadows and actually start playing and engaging with it and leaving their own shadows for the next person to find and discover. And this has been a really successful project. It's been traveling around the world. It's been in Tokyo, London, and Austin. So it's been really interesting to see how everyone has been responding to this. As we have transitioned into the back gallery, you probably notice how each space has a different color story. So this one becomes a much cooler space with blues and purples being the primary colors. And over here, it's one of our most interactive gallery spaces for this exhibit. You'll notice our floor installation here called the Aqueous. This is again by Jen Lewin. This is one of her temporary pieces that's been traveling. The original iteration was done in Miami, and that one was about 250 feet in diameter, and this recreation in our gallery is about 13 feet in diameter. And so this one is all based on sensory experience again, but really looking at pressure and frequency. So as people come onto the aqueous, they, it kind of transforms into an interesting dance floor. So it's all, again, all pressure and frequency, so you, and very strong, so you can jump, and it changes the colors or you can do dance. I've seen people do gymnastics on this one even. Over here, our most popular installation in our, back, in our galleries is the sponge chairs. They were created by Thomas Heatherwick. He's a designer based in London, and he was inspired to create this project because he was really interested in learning more about the metal spinning process and rotation molding. And so we have a plastic version of this. He, was, he originally did this in metal, but when he was invited to participate in the design festival in London in 2007, that was being installed on the center bank plaza, so it's concrete floors, and so the plastic version solves this so they wouldn't be scratched and usable later on. And so these usually are really safe. I've seen people kind of play around with it and then start rocking in it or whatnot. Usually it's successful, but sometimes that's when the flipping over starts, but it's not play if you don't have risks and different ways of interacting with it. And so you can hold on to it when you first start, or you can be like me and then do it all hands-free after having a lot of practice with them. So this project is actually an example in China. It's in Changsha, so a little north of Beijing. This is a pedestrian bridge, about 600 feet in length, and it was designed by Next Architects. This bridge is actually three bridges woven into one. It was inspired by the Chinese nodding arts. It's basically three ribbons all woven into one, and each time people cross over, it's never the same experience because there are these five moon gates that connect each path so they can interchange and it, it all each time. And it allows for a lot of activity so people can just be commuting and going straight through and such or they can decide to, well usually the children play tag, hide and seek and in some of these photos you can even see examples of people doing tai chi and yoga just enjoying the beautiful views and being away from the two highways and harbor that it's crossing over. All right, well, I'm trying to get the hang of this thing, but we're finished up here at the Museum of Design in Atlanta. So hope you had as much fun as we did. We'll see you on the next On the Road. <laughs> I just shut up on camera.